Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we had a state of the game where a lot of things were addressed and one of the really interesting things is the M1A is getting a reversion. So the nerf that was done is actually going to be reverted to the damage of that weapon in PvE, but in PvP, this is going to get a 20% nerf. A lot of the community is really uh, glad about this because this is pretty good. So a lot of people that have already uninstalled their game because this was taken out of the game... <laughs> I would say keep calm and go back and reinstall the game. The only thing, though, is we don't have a date for when this is going to come. Now, I could sit here and complain about the perfectly rooted and also the stealth nerf that was done to the motherly love gloves. But I'm not going to do that because skill builds have already taken a hit in both directions, both damage and tank. But healing builds are also good. So I'm just going to probably maybe work on a healing or, or a hybrid build because that's the way I enjoy playing. I've also seen a lot of the sentiment of people saying, you know, it's impossible to complete content without using the M1A, but I have hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage. One of the things about being a YouTuber is that you record your stuff. If you want, I can provide receipts where I've been in groups where we've run content with poise without using the M1A at all. And one of the best things about it is I random matchmake. So in random matchmaking, I'm doing a very, I'm doing a, a huge experiment to see what the community is running, what builds people are running. Uh, I play, you know, dedicatedly with the, you know, some of my friends, but sometimes I created, I, I created a whole different account for me to be able to just get away from my own, uh, you know, circle of friends sometimes and explore what else is going on in, the, you know, in my PC community here. And what I'm really surprised about is on PC, a lot of people actually play very wonky, weird builds that are not the M1A builds. And I know many people will watch the streams and watch the build videos from a lot of, you know, PC players that are streaming, but that's not the majority of players. Majority of players are actually just testing out, out all kinds of weird ways. It's like an alchemist thing here, you know, in the way many other PC players play, that's different from the way you've seen your streaming and your mainstream. So my experience is in, uh, in, admittedly a bubble with the way I see things, but how can that be a bubble when majority of the player base is doing different things? Now I can also understand that on console, it's nice to be able to get out some good damage because controls are very different. Having played division one on console, I think about 1200 hours before I moved to PC, I do understand that, you know, on console, things are different. There are some functionality I can throw down with my, you know, my key bindings and my settings that's actually pretty good on using a mouse and a keyboard that, you know, is better, just good for my own uh, personal use. On console, you're, all, you're basically limited to how the buttons and the functionality would work for you. So I can see where there is a difference. But nonetheless, it's worthwhile stating that the truth will always continue to be that PvP and PvE need to be two different systems within the game. If PvP players come to that reality... I think PvP will probably start getting much better because when you have PvP and PvE converging in some instances, you're going to have things like the 40% nerf that just happened that the developers had to quickly walk back because largely the game is too ambitious for them. PvP is in a place where I don't think they understand or know what they're going to do with it. And, you know, what we're going to continue to see is we're going to continue seeing things like this. The True Patriot nerf, they talked about the incoming repairs being too much. Uh, better than even healer builds. If that's the case, then I think maybe the tweak was justified, but I'd already put True Patriot down a while ago, but if I pick it up, I usually use it for a tank build nonetheless. If it's giving me any kind of healing at all, I'll take it, uh, but mostly I'm using it to buff the team, reduce the damage that the enemy NPCs are doing and increase the damage that they're taking. That's why I use the full flags and my tardigrade armor uh, and all that. So I think this, this TU-9 is is moving the game to a very solid spot. All the buffs that were made are now going to stay, including the M1A going in for PvE. So as a PvE player, I'm glad, I'm happy that we're going to be getting, you know, good stuff within the game. I don't PvP, so all I know and all I get is from what, you know, what PvP players are, are commenting or sharing within the game. Another aspect, too, that I have to also really touch on Another aspect that we have to touch on is best insula items. This is something that the developers have just basically failed to understand that if they put out these best insula items, they ought to understand that, you know, players are going to go for these. And so they have to limit however many best insula items they're putting in 
in every single patch. When they brought out Warlords of New York, they dropped like three of them at the same time. You know, Fox Spirit, Contractors Love, and Hollow Man Mask. These three were bound to be a combination. And it proves that they weren't testing their game when they released all three of them. This is the problem. Now, I have to also concede The Division is a very complex game to test. There are things that you probably won't see until the game actually goes on farther down the road. Right now, I can guarantee you that there are many bills that the developers don't know about that we are just hiding in the community. There are things that I don't make videos on until I see somebody make a video about it and I do a facepalm because I know it's nuked. It's going away. And so that's one. Of, that's what kept Sendoff in this game for a while because Sendoff was not supposed to be in the game. The developer said that it was supposed to, you know, holster talents were going away. So how a holster talent actually snuck through is because only, I think, Identity and a few other people had made videos about it. But because the devs did not look that far and then when it started to become a thing, they then decided, oh, okay, we're going to have to actually go back and touch this. So this is something that I definitely... I uh, have to say the developers need to be more um, intentional about testing their games. And then we have the issue of PTSs. PTSs used to be a good thing for the game because that gave time for people to actually get in there and test the game. But here is the problem. The developers, it's their responsibility to make sure PTSs are available for console and PC. It's one thing for you to put a PTS on PC and put a PTS on console. I will be the first to tell you that there are different mechanics for both of them on the way they control, on the way they play. So if you have a PTS for console and a PTS for, you know, the game, then you're going to have feedback from a wider variety of players. Now, I understand that Sony makes it slightly challenging for the developers to go ahead and put in a PTS. But ladies and gentlemen, it makes a whole lot of sense if these developers will get their act together and get their entire PTS um you know, package together and send it to Sony ahead of time. That's how you can actually get it done because they've done it before. All they have to do is make sure that they they put it in their schedule and they consider that their console base is also viable to help them test a lot of these things out. People will download it on console and will play it. I think the console player base is actually very big. I would almost argue that it's, you know, it's bigger than the PC player base because you have two different console platforms and so it is big. Now, yes, PC does have a very active player base. I, will, I won't lie. Like, I, I don't spend too much time matchmaking for stuff or calling for help. People show up um, almost every time, regardless of what nerfs or whatever. People just play the game. It's ridiculous, um, you know, the way people are playing the division on PC. But this is definitely something that I would just say, you know, Massive, get the job done. Making a game like this is very hard. I'm not going to, you know basically downplay how difficult it is to put a game like this together. But then the work that comes with maintaining the game is even much more difficult, in my opinion. So they need to be ready for it. Um, They need to hire people, whatever it is they need to do. They're making money off the game. People are buying all kinds of, you know, cosmetics. People paid for the expansion. So they need to spend that money and invest in the game. And then we can go on from there. Maybe the game is going to, you know, achieve more of its potential uh, and get better down the road. Because this is something that if the developers implement this, you know, flawlessly, I don't think we'll be in the place that we are today. And then also, I think, you know, you have to give them a little thumbs up. They seem to start understanding people. I mentioned in my last video that it seems like they don't understand PR. um, And largely, it seems like they don't factor it in. It's not until they see some backlash that sometimes they have to walk back some of the things and the changes that they've made. And this is where they have to, you know, say, okay. This is how we can do things. And then it brings me to the you know PTS thing again. Remember in the Camp White Oak um, mission and the Manning National Zoo, they brought out a PTS for those two missions. That was the last PTS that they implemented in the game. And a lot of the player base complained. Oh, I can't believe that some people have played the mission before I did and I paid for this. And so they said, you know what? Screw it. We're not doing any PTSs again. Why bother with the backlash? When, you know, we can just, leave, you know, throw the content out there in, you know, in, in situations like that. Now, I can understand PTSs can also allow for spoilers in a game, but there are ways to provide sections of the game that would allow for players to be able to test mechanics. In fact, if they even only just did a PTS just for PVP, just for the dark zone, every time they were doing a, you know, a PTS, I think it will, it will benefit the PVP community a lot because that would actually help PVP players to be able to go in there and see new mechanics and maybe test them out. 
But again, you cannot always 100% count on your player base to test your game. So the responsibility still falls on massive. Any and every time they're bringing out these things, they need to understand that some of these things will need to be tested. Another thing, too, that they can do if they think that this might be a huge problem is they can float some ideas out there for the community. Like, what would happen if this weapon was dealing 8% more damage? Or what would happen if you had this stat on an item? Do you see any potential problems? Hey, at that point, it's a conversation. People can start sending in possibilities and potential. And by the time the, the, you know, the stat or the item comes into full, you know, um, implementation, maybe it might be something that, you know, they probably want to add 20% something, but they tease it as an 8%, you know, it's stat increase. And so when it comes into the meta, when it comes into the gameplay, there's already a wide recognition of this item and players are either looking for how they can use this item or maybe even a pleasantly surprised as to how the item is actually better or beneficial. Or they can actually float something and say, what kinds of stat increase do you want to see? And, you know, players can start floating those ideas and giving feedback. The Division 1, like I've said before, did not get to the place that it is today by just the developers working on the game. It got to where it is today with a combination of the community feedback and the developers' input coming together to, you know, fine-tune that game to what it is today. So when people keep saying the Division 1 is, is a better game, it is a better game because the community gave feedback. And that's what we're doing for the Division 2. It's just taken a lot longer because the developers shunned feedback for basically the entire year one. They just kind of kept doing their own thing. And so the game had a one-year lapse. And so right now, it seems like they're paying more attention, a little bit more than they did in year one. And hopefully, we can get the game to where it needs to be as a community. So that's basically my little spill for this entire state of the game and my thoughts towards it. Um, even though more and more things will be revealed, best in slot items are going to still come back. I just want to encourage a lot of players to continue to experiment and keep yourself a lot of pocket builds so that when your build gets nerfed, you're basically immune. You can pick up another build and continue from where you are. Because I do understand it is very frustrating to farm things. I farmed a send off on two different accounts, by the way, and then they get taken away because somebody did not pay attention to details. So I get it. Um, but, you know, after playing the game for so long, I just kind of sidestep those things and just move on. It's the attitude that I want to bring to the game. And I know right now it's not really popular, but if I did things for popularity, I probably will not be making a YouTube channel around Tom Clancy's The Division and The Division 2. I'm doing this solely because I enjoy it and solely because it's what I would love to do. And so that's basically why I'm doing it. So whatever it is your thoughts are or your you know arguments or your disagreements, let me hear in the comment section. Like I would always say, keep the insults in your pocket. It's not going to change anything. The video has already been made. <laughs> I'm probably just going to respond or maybe even troll you if you insult me. But it is the internet, so, you know, like I said, it's all fair. All is fair on the internet. Keyboard warriors everywhere, so let's type on. I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate your time and audience. Peace.